Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you that you have everything under control. Father, as we begin this part of the service, we ask in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you minister your life. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in all of our hearts and lives. And Father, we're here to receive from you. And I thank you. I yield myself to you, Lord God, and ask you to speak through me to us, your people. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we've been going through the book of Galatians, and for those of you who haven't been here, one of the problems with the Galatian church, kind of big picture, is they were, it started with faith in Jesus, and now they were trying to go back into the league of the zip. And sometimes when we do Bible, it's almost like Bible stories, what application does that have today? Because a part of us, sometimes we, we, we know the Bible stories, and they're nice stories, and they, oh, they feel a little fuzzy sometimes, but... What application does that have today? In our society right now, we have a group of people that are working to earn their salvation and place in heaven. Have you met any of them? Because you're asking, you know, I'm a good person. Well, how do you know you're good? Well, I obey the commandments. All of them? Well, yeah, I'm a good person. And in, in, a, in a relative sense, they think they are earning their way to salvation. I wanted to just remind all of us here that even though we've been saved for a long time and walking with Jesus, we still have the opportunity to minister Jesus and, con and concepts to people outside who don't understand. I wanted to illustrate something real big before we get into what we're doing. Okay, to the person that says, uh, I don't need Jesus. I'm obeying the commandments. In the Tanakh, in the Old Testament, there are 613 commandments. Now, God said in Deuteronomy, he said basically, it's an all or no proposition. So it's not, I, well, I haven't cheated, so I'm a good person. Well, I haven't, I, I haven't lied, so I'm a good person. What? All 613. If you're going to earn your salvation and your place in heaven, you've got to fulfill all 613 without fail. So if you have ever lied, that's all. If you have ever lusted in your heart, coveted something that wasn't your own, bets are off. If you've ever <clears throat> stolen, the bets are off. But see, the people, we need, part of our job is to let them know, oh, no, no, no. It's an all or no proposition. That's what Deuteronomy said. You've got to do it all. And if you're not, if you, if you broke any one of them, no good. So God's original plan was he wanted us to understand that without him, we can't make it. That was his goal. So he gave us this to say, <laughs> no, you can't do it. This is theoretically. I just wanted something so you could visualize it. Because ultimately, when you're walking out that that person says, I'm a good person. I want all of that. Your mind is saying, you mean you, can, you keep, have always kept all 613 commandments? Excuse me? Oh, well, I'm 3 out of 10. No, no, you have to do it all. Now, this, this symbolically is putting your faith in Jesus. Now, this is my ticket to heaven, which is Jesus, putting my faith in what Jesus did because I could not do it all. Got the point? So I'm going to keep this up here so as you... Tomorrow, as you're ministering to the people wherever you are, you'll have a visual faith in Jesus, do it yourself. Faith in Jesus, do it yourself. And that's very, very important because we interact with people all the time. And for some of us that we talk to, their reference point is, well, I'm a good person because I have never raped anyone. But by God's standard, So let's go into our reading of Galatians. Here we go. One chapter, verses 21 to 31. I'm going to read them, and then we can go through some points. Tell me, you who desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For well, it was written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondwoman, the other by a free woman. But, who, but he who was of the bondwoman was born according to the flesh, and he is of the free woman who promise. Which things are symbolic? But these are, there are two covenants, one from Mount Sinai, which gives birth to bondage, which is Hagar, 
But this Hagar is Mount Sinai and Ramia, and corresponds to Jerusalem, which now is, and is in bondage with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, O Mary, you who do not fear, break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For the desolate hath many more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brother, as Isaac was, the children of promise. But as he who was born according to the flesh again persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, even so now. Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, but the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brother, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. So let's go back to the first part. Tell me, you who desire to the law, do you not hear the law? So we've kind of illustrated right here. A hundred percent or faith in Jesus. Now, back in, in Genesis, Abraham, his, he, he used faith in what God had said. And God said it was reckoned here for righteousness. So even before the law, even before circumcision, it was illustrated your faith was going to be in God's promise. <coughs> Moving forward. Abraham and Sarah tried to fulfill God's will with their own efforts. Now this is a beautiful story. If you want to take your time, go over there and read about the story of Abram and Sarai and eventually Hagar. It's a beautiful story. But it, we do the same things too. God tells us something. He doesn't do it in our time frame or the way we think it should be done. So we get out there and we help God. Any, any, anybody ever did that before? <laughs> You get out there and you go, I'm going, to show, I'm going to make it happen. I know it's supposed to be, so you get out there and before you know it, you're out here and you've created a new reality. If you go back into the story, for those of you who are not familiar, God promised Abraham and Sarah they would have a child. It took too long. Sarah said to her husband, baby hey, boy, Hagar's my handmaid. Let's get together. That's how we're going to have children. Maybe, maybe that's God's plan. Maybe that's God's plan. So they get together, and they have a son called Ishmael. Ishmael, father of the Arabs, they, that group. And so in essence, he created a whole different direction. And so he was talking with God, and it's kind of like, I said, no, 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 no. I'm going to bless Ishmael because he came out of your body. But my plan is still over here. So time goes on. Sarah has to bathe Isaac. So that's that whole little story. We get out, we get out to help God. We're going to do it at own strength, but it wasn't God. So it's very important, I mean, a lesson for us today, to make sure whatever you call yourself doing in the name of God, and it's God. If we go way back, remember the Crusades? One of the things that got everybody going, because nobody was reading the Bible, the king of the priest says, it is God's will, go kill him. Was it God's will? No. But the guy said it was God's will. They didn't know the word of God, so therefore they followed, killed a bunch of people. And therefore we have the crusades. So it's important that we say, what is God saying here? That's why this book is so very, 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 very important. Even above Oprah, even above CNN, even above. This is very, very important because that's how we discern truth, right and wrong. Moving forward. It says here, but he who was of the bond woman was born according to the flesh. He of the free woman through the promise, which things are symbolic. Now there are some things when we look at stuff, God allows us to be able to look. I have kind of on the back side over here, there's like a little diagram. And there's little things for, like contrasts that we can actually look at. And as you go through here, they're, they're contrasts. But one thing he's actually saying is, if you go this way, it's a dead end road. If you go this way, that's the line we're dead. That's what it comes down to. So we look at the Hagar, we look at Sarah. God's plan was through the promise, so it's coming through Sarah. Now one thing I found, um, years ago, before I met Pamela, I had a house. In my house, I had a refrigerator. And in my refrigerator, I had a shelf that I put my bread on. Okay? That was my preference, how I chose to put my bread in my refrigerator that I had bought at a store. I married Pamela, and overnight the bread was on the wrong shelf. Can you imagine that? Now for five 
years, the bread had been on the top shelf. But overnight, it became on the wrong shelf. So we had a discussion. I said, family, personal preference does not make it right or wrong. If you want to know, we can put it on the bottom shelf. I'm okay with that. When we come to this whole story of God and heaven, whose heaven is it? God's. Okay, so if it's God's heaven, who can say or spell out how we get there? God. Because it's His. It's His heaven. So if He says well, it's going this way, our goal is to do it His way. And you have Paul trying to talk to the Galatian church because it's like, hello, you all are missing it. You know, in our vernacular, you say, are you on crack? What's wrong with you? You know better than this. You know better than this. You didn't get saved by your actions. You got saved by putting faith in Jesus Christ. And so they were going back to getting under legalism, but sometimes you and I do the same thing too. I have my devotions. I pray 15 times a week. I fast often. I go to church almost every time the doors open. The pastor knows me by first name. Before we know it, our our stuff, we almost think that's what's making. Now the bottom line is. Because I have a love for Jesus, all these activities flow, but that does not earn me. So you, you see the difference? We do good works not because we're trying, oh God, love me, please love me. We do good works in appreciation. We do works that flows from us, not because we're trying to earn favor with God, heaven with God. Get it? And so that was the discussion that was going on. The Galatian church was starting to shift over here and say, well, when we'll go back into the legalism. We're going to do it the law way. And he's saying, this is futile. This is futile because it's a dead end road. If you look, like it says, if you look at these two covenants, there's one on Mount Sinai, there's one in Jerusalem. Jesus, the Jerusalem, Mount Sinai was the law of Moses. And so he's laying it down here. We, we can look at these two things and see the difference. There is a difference. Now the law of Moses, pretty much the bottom line, it never was going to save anybody. Mainly because nobody can do it. How many of you know that um, the vehicle pull for the state of Florida? The vehicle code. You know, we get in our little cars. The state of Florida has this big old list of what's right and wrong when it comes to driving on their roads. Have you noticed? How many of you have ever been pulled over, stopped, and a policeman told you something you never knew that? Really? You weren't supposed to turn there. Well, why not? There was nothing posted. Well, a statue, da 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 da. And then, I know, I, I've had tickets in, in, in California, so I, I know that little better. But they, the guys, when he does that, he puts the yoga code, da 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 da. Never heard of that before. But I was in violation of it because in the state of California, on the statute of the vehicle code, that number meant I wasn't supposed to do what I did. So my point is, you and I, as we're driving this and driving safely in the state of Florida, we could be violating rules we know nothing about. So my point is, a lot of us do stuff, but the bottom line is, we are in violation. So if I'm trying to earn my way, now again, when you're talking to your buddies or your buddyettes, and they say to you, I'm a good person, by what standard? That's a nice retort. By what standard? Well, I'm a good person because I keep the commandments. All of them? Well, no, I don't. Four out of ten. No, no, there's 613. Which one are you? <laughs> And again, that's just the same as the vehicle code. It's going to blow me. It's going to put it out. It's like, wait a minute, I, I didn't know about those. I'm just working on the Big Ten. And most of us with the Big Ten didn't make it. <laughs> right? So think of this. They have 603 more. That, that's, that's crazy. But anyway, that's, that's what it's saying. There's this whole contrast thing. It's, there's an old covenant, new covenant. And I love the new covenant because when God said in Jeremiah, He said, I'm going to do a new covenant. He gave the reason why he's giving the new covenant. He says that you broke the old covenant. Jeremiah 31. He said, the reason I'm having to do this is because you have broke the other one. You did not keep the covenant. So therefore, I'm having to do a new covenant. And so that's the dynamic that we're dealing with. So in essence, he's trying to get them to understand the big, big, big picture. If you move up to verse 28, it says, Now the brethren, as Isaac was, our children of promise. We are children of promise because of faith in Jesus. We are brother and sister because of faith in Jesus. Now you and I, I'm not, I'm not physically related to anybody in this room. 
But spiritually, we have the same father. So therefore, I have brothers and sisters here. I, I love it when they're in the testimony. It's like a family. I experience the family thing. Now, again, for some of you, you may have noticed I'm not the same color as some other people in the room. But the family has not made that an issue. I love you, you love me, we're family. Because we got the same father. And so I came from California and began to meet with the guys Wednesday morning at 6 30 at Perkins. Yeah. And I, I began to get to know people. It blew my mind. How and I were moving. We were moving from a third floor apartment to a house. Okay. The guys knew about it, just they had information. I hadn't asked them or anything. They showed up. It was like the cavalry came to help me out. And the, on the third floor, there was no elevator. No elevator. A lot of steps. A lot, a lot of steps. <laughs> but my point is, that's where the love of Jesus, being Jesus with skin, showed up in a way that I was like, oh, this is deep. I have not experienced this since California. You know, and, and I didn't ask him for anything. Be different than I had asked him, uh, Pastor Tom, I need you to be there. I'll give you $50 an hour. It's nothing. They showed up on the kindness of their heart because we're family. We're brothers and sisters in the Lord. And that's what it's supposed to look like. And so that's what he's getting here. He says, we are children of the promise and brother of faith in Jesus. What unites us is Jesus Christ. As I drive here in the morning, normally I'll come down 466, I pass a few churches. And I pray for them. There's even a church that's meeting in the, uh, the uh, veterans place. And I pray for them because those are my brothers and sisters worshiping. And I'm praying that God would minister, whatever happens in the earth, that He would minister, that He'll walk away, lift it up. Because we are part of the family. And so it's a very, very good thing. Now it says, but as He who was born according to the flesh, then persecuted Him who was born according to the Spirit, even so it is now. And that point there, they're uh, referencing uh, Ishmael, was kind of giving jabs at Isaac, because they were living in the same household. And so the, the, the one of promise, which was Isaac, was being persecuted by the one of the natural flesh. Even today that happens. When you and I walk in the flesh, did you ever notice we kind of persecute each other? Sometimes we do physical things, but when you're in the flesh, that's when we say the wrong things. We do the wrong things. I have a little thing that I made in my mind. I said, flesh decisions cost. Sometimes they cost time. Sometimes they cost relationships. Sometimes they cost money. But flesh decisions cost. When I'm in the flesh, hypothetically, it's not, it's not, it's not, just say I'm mad today. It's a rough day. I'm mad. I come here to cry over some years over here. And I just let him have it. I'm angry and I just pant on him. Okay, I'm in the flesh. I throw it on him. He didn't deserve it, did he? He didn't do anything at all. But my, in the flesh, I'm wanting to fight. I'm wanting to continue. So I dump on him. Sometimes the dog gets kicked. Sometimes our spouse gets things that they don't need to hear. But in flesh decisions, when you've been to flesh, we do this stuff. The, 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 we, further down, the Galatians 5 is going to talk about the works of the flesh. Strife is one of them. Discord, all that bad stuff. And so when the flesh, and that's what it's saying here, the flesh is going to persecute those of the spirit. There's a persecution that goes. There's, there's, there's an end. And we see it in our world today. You know, and sometimes church people do it to other church people. Can I go down memory lane? This is when I was a kid, years and years and years ago, back in Compton. The uh, piano player lady had a daughter. Her daughter was kind of oversized. The senior pastor and the senior pastor's wife, they had a bunch of kids. The piano player wanted her daughter to be hooking up with the senior pastor's oldest son. And she was expecting the senior pastor's wife to facilitate this coming together. However, the son didn't want the oversized opportunity. And the mother did not figure it was her role to facilitate this thing. So one Sunday morning before church, the piano player lady brought a bat, a baseball bat, to church. And she is running after the senior pastor's wife to let her know you're supposed to be 
doing my cause. They had a restraint of lady, blah, blah, blah. But my point is, that was really flesh. Yeah. And that would have been, ended up church hurt. And as a child, I had a new memory. Oh, well, church people are wise. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it illustrates the point. We in church sometimes, we chew on each other. Sometimes, now we here, we're working pretty good, good together. But in the church, well, at large, a lot of times, we denominations chew on each other. People inside the church, some of us have gone to other churches where that happens. Any survivors? <laughs> but basically, there's a concept we need to understand. Uh, verse 30 says, Nevertheless, what does the scripture say? Cast out the bottom of the name of her son, for the son of the bottom of shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. Flesh will not inherit. Galatians 5.21, it says, flesh, The flesh is not going to inherit in the kingdom of God. But in the concept here, if I am trying to use my flesh abilities, my natural abilities to earn my salvation, you and I will not inherit. Is the only way to approve of God. So if we understand that when we're talking to people, sharing with people, we understand, hey, wait, 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 look, back up, back up. You have just told me that you have not fulfilled since birth 613 commandments. So therefore, you have nothing. When you stand before God, you have nothing to talk about. This is the only thing before God that I can, I can, I can say something. Okay? So, brethren, we are not children of the bond woman, but of the free. The conclusion, brethren, we are children of the free woman and promise. So, if we understand that dynamic, however long we've been in Jesus, however long we've been in church, it's Jesus. As good as you are now, as nice as you are. Some of us have been walking with God so long we forgot where we came from. But ultimately, as good as you are, you are going to have anyway. Are those raised in the church? Maybe you were doing the outside sins, but there's a bunch of stuff inside those doors. Unforgiveness, bitterness, pride, arrogance, and all that kind of stuff. That's breaking his commands too. So it's very, very important. It says, we are children of the free woman and of the promise. That's what we are. We are children of the promise. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. And again, if we understand that dynamics, I can't get proud of it. And so I'm, I'm better. I was at church yesterday doing church work for God. Yeah. Praise God. That did not earn me one point in heaven. It's not like you show up four times to do the church cleanup, you do three times and you get to go to heaven. No, no, no. That's an expression of your love for God. And if you're doing it to be seen of man, as Jesus said, you got your reward. Think about that concept. Some people do stuff, they do stuff because they want people to see. And God says, okay, you got your reward. So if you get before God and say, God, I gave $18 billion. I built 75 churches with my name in every fellowship hall. And God will say, okay, you have your reward. What are we talking about? Because you had your reward. Right there, you had your reward. If that's why you're doing what you do. But our motivation is out of love for God. Come on, my wife, for almost 27 years. When I go to the store to buy stuff, I buy stuff because I want to make her happy. I want to minister to her. I buy stuff that she likes. I can't have my shirt. I found out there's a difference between dark chocolate and milk chocolate. <laughs> I didn't know that before. Chocolate, chocolate. And one day she let me know, I really like dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, I go and I look for dark chocolate. Why? Because I'm trying to earn her love and affection? No. Because I love her and I want to minister to her. The same way we do with God. I do stuff for God because I love Him. And I want to say thank you for saving me. Thank you for working in my life. I appreciate you. And if this makes you happy, let's do it. So our motivation is not, I'm earning my. My motivation is, I love you. Let's close. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for just this lesson here, Lord God, to remind us that our faith is in Jesus Christ. It's not in our good works. It's not in our stuff that we do. Our salvation is in Jesus. So, Lord God, we thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to have a song and we're going to close in prayer. And then we'll eat.
this is. Thanksgiving, sometimes we get to our families this kind of dysfunctional. This will be a healthy place. <laughs> and we can share together, enjoy life, and not worry about all such and such. Father God, we thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Father God, to be called by your name. Father, as we leave here today, we ask that you use us to minister life. But Lord, we thank you that we have a relationship with you. Not based upon our efforts, not based upon our actions, but based upon your promise. And we thank you for that. The food we ask in Jesus' name that you sanctify and nourish our bodies. And we thank you for our fellowship. And in Jesus' name we pray and say, Amen. Amen.